It isn't too surprising that Bray Wyatt became a WWE wrestler. Both his father and grandfather wrestled for the company, so wrestling was already in Wyatt's blood. Despite that, Bray Wyatt wasn't planning on becoming a wrestler, instead attending college on a football scholarship. However, in the middle of his education, Bray decided had to drop out and change careers by following in the footsteps of his father and entering the world of wrestling. Bray Wyatt didn't go into it alone, as he was joined by his younger brother, Bo Dallas. They started their training at WWE's development system, FCW, in 2008. Wyatt had his first ever wrestling match in early 2009 and had performed under the name Duke Rotundo, Rotundo being a reference to Bray Wyatt's real name, Wyndham Rotunda. He spent over a year in development before getting his shot in WWE. On season 2 of NXT, Wyatt was one of 8 rookies competing to become the next, quote, breakout star. Bray was renamed Husky Harris and paired with Cody Rhodes. The same night he debuted on the main roster, the future Bray Wyatt had his first WWE match. Wyatt teams with his mentor, Cody Rhodes, in a match against MVP and his rookie, Showtime Percy Watson. Cody started as a legal man, and, after wearing down Percy, Rhodes tagged in his rookie. Bray hit a handful of big moves on Showtime, including a splash into the corner, but soon tagged back out. Cody Rhodes continued to dish out punishment to MVP's rookie, but eventually got Bray Wyatt back into the match. Bray hit a massive senton, but missed an elbow drop, allowing Percy Watson to tag in MVP. Montel Vontavious Porter picked up the pace of the match and started laying into Bray Wyatt. Cody Rhodes tried to help his rookie, but had no luck. Showtime take back in, hit a finishing move, and got the pinfall victory over Bray Wyatt. The match was fine. While Bray wasn't actually Bray Wyatt yet, some of the moves he used as Husky Harris were the same that he would use as the Eater of Worlds. On that topic, how do you go from Husky to Bray? After several weeks on NXT, the third generation wrestler was eventually eliminated from the competition. Wyatt would still be seen on the main roster though. At Hell in a Cell 2010, he attacked John Cena during a match and soon joined the Nexus. The future face of fear stayed with the group for several months and remained a Nexus member even after CM Punk took over the faction. Wyatt's first run on the main roster came to an abrupt end though, when Punk started feuding with Randy Orton. Bray, Husky Harris Wyatt, as well as the other Nexus members, would aid CM Punk, which ended up getting Wyatt a punch kick to the head. This was used to write Bray off TV, so he could be sent back to development to train further. During this time, Bray Wyatt dropped the Husky Harris character and developed a new, darker persona. This new character became known as Bray Wyatt, a creepy cult leader, and debuted in FCW in 2012. Shortly after Bray's debut, FCW had come to an end and NXT became WWE's new development system. Bray Wyatt moved over to this new brand and promo videos started airing on the show. These gave fans insight into who Wyatt was and ultimately built Bray Wyatt's first official match as Bray Wyatt. Before the ring announcer could introduce him, Bray Wyatt already had a mic in his hand. He described himself to fans as the angel in the dark and that they'd be finding out more about him soon. Wyatt's debut match was against future vaude villain Aiden English, who was NXT's resident enhancement guy at the time. Bray's first move was to kick English in the gut and wear him down. The action went to the floor where the cult leader continued to dish out punishment and smiled as he did it. Bray displayed his strength by getting English back into the ring and lifting the 215 pound man over his shoulder. Wyatt then sent his entire body crashing into Aiden English and hit Sister Abigail to close out his debut match. The entire contest was just under two minutes, so not a whole lot to this one. The main purpose though was to give an official introduction to Bray Wyatt and give a live showcase of the Wyatt character. Fans seemed to like the character almost instantly too, as they chanted Wyatt during the match. This was truly only the beginning, because, following his debut, Bray would go on to form the Wyatt family. He introduced two followers he called sons, Luke Harper and Eric Rowan. Bray Wyatt guided Harper and Rowan to victory when they became NXT Tag Team Champions. Around the same time, creepy videos would be shown on Raw, warning the main roster of the Wyatt family's arrival. Their first target was Kane, with the trio attacking the Big Red Machine on Raw. This set up the Bray Wyatt character's first match on the main roster. Considering both Bray and Kane were two of the most supernatural characters in WWE, it only made sense they fought in an inferno, I mean arena fire match. With help from Luke Harper and Eric Rowan, Bray got a huge win by defeating the devil's favorite demon. Wyatt continued to destroy the WWE roster, picking up wins over mainly smaller names. The Wyatt family then moved on to a rivalry with CM Punk and Daniel Bryan, which began after Luke Harper lost a match to Punk. Despite the Wyatt's dominance, the best in the world and the GOAT outwrestled the family on multiple occasions. Things changed though when Bray and his followers singled out Bryan. After multiple beatdowns, Daniel Bryan and gave in and became the fourth member of the Wyatt family. It turned out to be a bad acquisition though, because not only did the Wyatt family stop winning after Brian joined, but when Bray went to punish him, Daniel turned on him and left the group. The Eater of Worlds got his revenge at the 2014 Royal Rumble by beating Daniel Bryan, although their paths would cross again years later. Later that same night, Wyatt, Harper, and Rowan attacked another major star. 
John Cena. Bray later explained that he wanted to show that Cena's heroic characteristics were fake and his intentions were to change the face of WWE into a monster. At WrestleMania 30, Bray and Cena went one-on-one -on -one, and, despite interference from the Wyatt family, John Cena stood triumphant and became the first person to pin the new face of fear. Bray would avenge his loss a month later at Extreme Rules, but it didn't really matter since he and Cena faced off in a third match where the 16-time world champion literally buried Wyatt under a pile of equipment cases. After that rivalry, Bray feuded with another WWE veteran, Chris Jericho. This one went a bit better, with Jericho only defeating Bray Wyatt once and Wyatt beating Y2J twice, one of which was at SummerSlam. After this, the Wyatt family broke up after Bray sent Luke Harper and Eric Rowan free. This meant for the first time in his WWE career, Bray Wyatt was a singles competitor. His first solo rivalry started at Hell in a Cell 2014. Bray interfered in a match between Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins, causing Ambrose to lose. This began a feud that continued through the rest of 2014 and ended in early 2015. Out of the five matches Dean and Bray had, Wyatt won four of them, which was a nice comeback after his two previous rivalries with Cena and Jericho. After his successful feud with the Lunatic Fringe, Bray Wyatt went after another legend, The Undertaker. At Fastlane, Bray officially challenged the dead man to a match at WrestleMania, which Taker accepted. Like the previous year though, Wyatt fell victim to the Tombstone Piledriver and left the grand stage of the mall in defeat. The next major rivalry for the Eater of Worlds was against Roman Reigns. Wyatt would cost Reigns the Money in the Bank contract, set up a match at Battleground. Thanks to the interference from Luke Harper, Bray Wyatt defeated the Big Dog and reformed the Wyatt family. Eric Rowan eventually came back too, as well as a new member, Braun Strowman. The revived Wyatt family picked up some wins, such as at TLC over the ECW Legends, but also had their fair share of losses, like against the Brothers of Destruction at Survivor Series, Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns at SummerSlam, or against The Rock and John Cena at WrestleMania 32. In 2016, Bray's career hit a bit of a roadblock when he suffered an injury while WWE was touring Europe. He wasn't gone for long though, and once he returned, the Wyatts had a feud with the WWE Tag Team Champions, The New Day. The family beat the champs at Battleground, however, the tag titles were not on the line. Shortly after the big win, the group was split up, with Strowman going to Raw while Bray and Harper went to SmackDown. The split ended up being a great move for Bray Wyatt's career. He began a feud with Randy Orton when Wyatt called Orton damage. They were set to face off at Backlash, but Wyatt attacked the Viper before their match started, allowing Bray to win by forfeit. The two men with Ys at the end of their names went at it once more at No Mercy, where Wyatt won again thanks to help from Luke Harper. Despite their rivalry, Randy Orton surprised everyone by joining Wyatt and Harper and creating the third incarnation of the Wyatt family. They went after the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, Rhino and Heath Slater, defeating them at TLC. The group utilized the Freebird rule, making the SmackDown Tag Team Championship the first title Bray Wyatt won in WWE. The celebration was short-lived, however. Just a few weeks later, the Wyatt family lost the titles in a match where Luke Harper and Randy Orton were defending them. Tempers began to flare because of the loss, leading to a match between Orton and Harper. Randy won that match, causing Bray to attack Harper afterward and exile him from the group. Not long after winning his first championship, Bray Wyatt won another. At the 2017 Elimination Chamber, Bray outlasted five other men to win the WWE title, a massive accomplishment for a guy who used to be called Husky Harris. Randy Orton had won the Royal Rumble about a month earlier, but agreed not to challenge Bray. With his full trust, Wyatt gave Orton access to the Wyatt family compound. It turned out the whole thing had been a trick, and the Viper burned down the compound and challenged Bray to a match at WrestleMania. Things only got worse as Bray Wyatt fell victim to the RKO and lost his third WrestleMania match as well as the WWE Championship. Bray would defeat Orton in their rematch at Payback, but like with Battleground 2016, the match was non-title, meaning Wyatt didn't win back the WWE Championship. Around this time, Bray Wyatt was moved to Raw. He had a few minor feuds, but things really got good when he started a rivalry with Matt Hardy. After defeating Hardy in a match, Matt reverted to his broken persona, or Woken as he is now being called. They played mind games with each other and continued having matches, with both wrestlers trading wins and losses. The rivalry built to the ultimate deletion match, where the Woken one defeated the Eater of Worlds. Afterward, Matt took the battle a step further and threw Bray into the lake of reincarnation. Wyatt wasn't seen again until WrestleMania 34 when he helped his former enemy win the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy were now working together and, soon after, they won the Raw Tag Team Championship. Unfortunately, in their first title defense, they lost the belts to Curtis Axel and Bray's brother, Bo Dallas. Afterward, Matt Hardy took time off to heal his injuries, and Bray Wyatt would also disappear from WWE. In April 2019, weird videos of disturbing puppets began playing on Raw and SmackDown. Bray Wyatt returned later, appearing in some kind of children's TV show called the Firefly Funhouse. He would interact with the previously mentioned puppets, which were references to different parts of Wyatt's career, like Huskus the Pig Boy, who represented Husky Harris. The Firefly Funhouse would slowly become dark with Bray symbolically destroying his old self. 
This led to Wyatt introducing a new masked persona called The Fiend. Eventually, Bray Wyatt as The Fiend would leave the Firefly Funhouse and begin attacking the WWE roster. The first victim was Finn Balor, whom Wyatt defeated quickly at SummerSlam. The Fiend continued attacking people and began using the mandible claw to incapacitate them. After putting everyone on notice, The Fiend set his sights on the Universal Champion, Seth Rollins. Fitting with Wyatt's new character, Seth and The Fiend went to war inside Hell in a Cell. Seth hit a ridiculous amount of curb stomps and the fight ultimately ended by referee stop. Wyatt and Seth went at it again at Crown Jewel, and this time, The Fiend beat Rollins and became the new Universal Champion. Following the victory, Bray had two different versions of the Universal Championship that he would use. The first was the normal belt that his Firefly Funhouse character would have. The other was a creepy black and red leather belt with his face in the middle. The Fiend's first challenger was actually an old rival, Daniel Bryan. Like Bray Wyatt did in 2014, The Fiend defeated Daniel, once at the 2019 Survivor Series, and again at, ironically, the 2020 Royal Rumble. The Fiend's teleran was going well, only for it to end at Super Showdown, a returning Goldberg defeated The Fiend in three minutes and became the new Universal Champion. Shortly after becoming championshipless again, The Fiend confronted another old rival, John Cena, and challenged him to a match at WrestleMania. Of course, Cena accepted, and the two competed in a Firefly Funhouse match. The match, if you want to call it that, went through their history and played out moments in a surreal way. In the end, The Fiend won, avenging Bray Wyatt's defeat against Cena six years earlier. Hot off his WrestleMania victory, Bray Wyatt set his sights on another individual from his past, Braun Strowman, who is now the Universal Champion. Over the summer of 2020, Wyatt played a number of disturbing mind games, causing Strowman to change and bring out the monster inside him. After a few matches, they went one-on-one -on -one at SummerSlam, where The Fiend successfully defeated Braun to become a two-time Universal Champion. However, if you haven't learned, Bray Wyatt's championship reigns never lasted long. Immediately after winning the title, a returning Roman Reigns attacked both The Fiend and Braun Strowman. This set up a triple threat match at Payback one week later, where Roman Reigns won the Universal title after pinning Strowman. The Fiend didn't try to regain his championship. Instead, he went back to Raw and bumped into another rival from Bray's past, Randy Orton. Over the course of several weeks, The Fiend would stalk and attack the Viper. This ultimately led to them facing off at TLC 2020 in a Firefly Inferno match. Since he burnt Bray's compound, the only way to top that was to burn Wyatt himself which is exactly what Orton did. For the next few months, Bray Wyatt wouldn't be seen, although his presence was still felt. This was thanks to his newest follower, Alexa Bliss, who had aligned herself with The Fiend prior to the rivalry with Orton. Bliss would keep Wyatt's presence alive by harassing and attacking Randy Orton. This led to an intergender match at the 2021 Fastlane between The Viper and Bliss. During the fight, The Fiend returned by rising from the ring and attacking Randy Orton, allowing Bliss to pin him. After a move like that, it was only fitting that Orton and The Fiend would have a rematch. The two agreed to face each other at WrestleMania 37, four years after their last WrestleMania encounter. Even though he came into the match as The Fiend and not Bray Wyatt, he couldn't get the job done. While Bray was strong and put up a good fight, a distraction by Alexa Bliss allowed the Apex Predator to capitalize and shut The Fiend down. In the next night on Raw, Alexa Bliss explained she no longer needed The Fiend and left him. Wyatt would respond by saying he was looking forward to a fresh start, which didn't exactly happen. For several months, neither Bray Wyatt nor The Fiend would be seen. Then, in July 2021, it was announced that Wyatt had been released from WWE. It was shocking and disappointing, but the story didn't end there. A little over a year after Bray Wyatt's release, rumors of his return started circulating. In September 2021, WWE began playing an acapella version of the song White Rabbit by Jefferson Airplane during commercial breaks and at untelevised events. QR codes would appear on WWE TV that led to web pages that all seemed to reference Bray and The Fiend. Finally, at Extreme Rules 2022, Wyatt would officially return, along with live action versions of the characters from the Firefly Funhouse. Six days later, on SmackDown, Bray Wyatt officially addressed the fans, but was cut short by a mysterious masked individual. This would happen again two weeks later, with the masked man calling himself Uncle Howdy. At the same time, Bray would literally butt heads with LA Knight and began a rivalry with him. The two continued to confront and attack each other over the next several weeks. During one encounter, Uncle Howdy appeared in person and scared off LA Knight. Soon after, LNA would challenge Bray Wyatt to a match at the Royal Rumble. Bray accepted, and at the same moment, Uncle Howdy once again joined the two. This time, however, Howdy attacked Bray Wyatt to the shock of everyone. The last big moment before Wyatt and Knight's match happened during the 30th anniversary of Raw. LA Knight was talking trash about the WWE legends who were backstage, which got the attention of The Undertaker. Knight didn't want any piece of the dead man, but Bray Wyatt wasn't going to let his Royal Rumble opponent get off that easily. Taker and Bray laid out LA Knight, and it seemed to be a passing of the torch. After getting the dead man's seal of approval, it was time for Bray Wyatt to compete in what sadly turned out to be his final match.
At the 2023 Royal Rumble, Bray Wyatt and LA Knight faced off in a pitch black match. In addition to the ring and arena being drenched in black light and neon colors, the match was anything goes, and the only way to win was by pinfall or submission. Once the bell rang, Bray instantly took LA Knight down and started dishing out punishment. Wyatt then threw LA Knight over his shoulder and then over his head. The fight soon went outside of the ring, where LA Knight turned things around by throwing Bray Wyatt into the rain steps. Before Knight could do anything, Wyatt threw LA over the barricade. Wyatt tried to suplex his opponent onto the announcer's table, but LA Knight countered and drove Bray through the table instead. LA Knight tried to build off the momentum, but got shoved out of the ring. Knight fought back with the glowing kendo stick, only for Bray to shut it down with Sister Abigail and end the match. The fight wasn't over though. After the bell rang, Bray Wyatt suddenly had a mask on and started stalking his opponent. LA Knight ran away and tried to fight off Bray, but it had no effect. Bray subdued LA Knight, and suddenly, Uncle Howdy appeared and hit Knight with an elbow drop from the top of a platform. The match and the entire segment were fun. Sure, the pitch black match was technically a promotional tie-in, but they honestly made it work, and it actually lent itself perfectly to Bray Wyatt. Wyatt's neon paint looked cool, and the whole ring looked sweet under the black light. Even little things, like those beads that fell out of the announcer's table, were kind of satisfying to see. It seemed though, this is only part of a bigger story with Uncle Howdy and the Firefly Funhouse, and sadly, the ending would never happen. After the Royal Rumble, Bray Wyatt said he would target whoever won the match between Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley at Elimination Chamber. Lashley won via disqualification, so that was who Bray set his sights on. Bray began taunting the Almighty, but a match between them never came. Wyatt was pulled off TV due to him battling a real-life illness. After six months, reports came out that Bray Wyatt was recovering and would be making a return soon. Then, on August 24th, 2023, the saddest news possible would be shared. It was revealed by Triple H that Wyndham Rotunda had died. Rotunda's family later shared that the cause of death was a heart attack. The devastating news called the SmackDown broadcast the next day to turn into a tribute to Bray Wyatt. In the comments, share your favorite Bray Wyatt moments and let us never forget the memories this legend gave us.